Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Back Porch Lounge. We are the Leaf Cutters, and I'm your host, Ben. And I'm Andy. And you got Graham. Robert here. And I'm Zach. Yay! Oh, for <laughs> tonight, really 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 Yay! What? What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so. For tonight's episode, we uh, we're actually doing a cigar provided to us by BadassPenny.com, and that is Yay. the LFD Solus. I hope to God I pronounced that correctly. Oh damn it! So, uh, uh, a technical All comment. Right, no. Come on, I'll sing it with you. Ready? One, two, three. Get your tobacco, Get your tobacco fucking, fucking shit. Fucking shit. A badass com. You are without that doubt the worst singers in America. <laughs> Y'all need to work on that. A yeah, lot. we do. See, was, that was way off. It was our first practice. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it, it was, I think it was partly, uh, you know, whiskey brain. So. Oh, so it's whiskey. That's the thing. <laughs> That's the thing. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm nice. one of those. There you go. See? There's, there's perfect excuse right there. Uh, but yeah. yes, BadassPenny.com is our purveyor of cigars and all your fine quality goods that say fuck. So fuck. if you need anything that says fuck, please go to BadassPenny.com first and then try to find it somewhere else. Because I guarantee you, there's not enough shit anywhere else that has the word fuck on it than on her site. <laughs> I challenge you to actually figure this out for us. And then put it in the comments if you find a place that has more fuck shit. This feels like a bad That's idea. More fuck shit. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a great idea. I mean, Anything I can do is a bad a idea. Pretty I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. It'll be good. Hey, man. What are I mean, we may get a lot of sites that are more fucking, but <laughs> maybe not fuck shit. So we're going to get grown well, search history. Sir. Gotcha. I'm just saying. I, you know, they kind of open the door for that one, so that's not so good. Are, are we gonna light these cigars? Is it is it okay to light the cigar oh, now? I'm just lighting mine. Sorry, guys. As in traditional fashion, as we light up, uh, Robert has a question. So, with all the talk of humidifiers and humidors and such, what happens if a cigar is over humidored or under humidored? Is that a word? No. Is that a word? What's the word I'm looking for? Humidified, maybe? Okay. I'll go with that word. Or humidification, or, yeah. Words are hard, it doesn't matter. What word? So, Why'd you ask me? Zach knows all the words. Zach, what are the words? Liquification. Humidified is what you're looking for. Humidified. Oh, all right. lighter just died. So... Kept it I'll, I'll give a stab at it. So I, I will address the underhumidified, right? Okay. When you have a cigar that is underhumidified, uh, you're going to have a lot of dryness in that cigar. Uh, it's going to be a lot harder. Um, and even Ready. when you, if you do like a dry draw on it, you're you're going to. You're gonna taste the difference in that cigar, and that it, it's gonna have that dryness come through when you actually dry draw on it. Um, but what happens whenever it is actually underhumidified? Uh, there do tend to be a lot more construction issues. Uh, it'll burn a lot faster. Um, I mean, there's just they're just a lot of things that can tell, and, and uh, you may have some popping in your cigar as well. From where the veins have dried them that out dry, so much, that's, that's I've, I've had them that dry where the you know the the veins in the leaf have uh, dried out so much into one little oh, area. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely um, experienced that. Basically, all the moisture is gathered in one little bitty part of the the vein, and as soon as you hit that part, pop, you'll get a pop in it. So, um, that's some of the bad things that can happen. Does anybody else want to address the overhumidified? Sure. I guess I'll do that one. Uh, other than the fact that 
your sticks, your, your cigars will feel uh, soggy and squishy like a sponge, more so than they're supposed to. Um, you run the chance of uh, inviting the wonderful cigar beetle to uh, grow its infestation into your the rest of your collection, and you'll see pinpoints in your cigars or where they will eat through all of the tobacco and just leave a, a heap of uh, leafy mess. Um, add to that, so if it's not, if it hasn't gotten to that point, your cigar will uh, struggle to stay lit, it may burn crooked, um, you'll get tar at the, at the cut, regardless of if you do a straight, a V, or a punch, it'll tar up a bit. More so than it would if it was uh, humidified properly. So try to keep it between that. Wait, I'm not even going to save the 70-70 thing because, you know, Gibbs, at least at Gibbs' house, it's not 70-70. It's not that at my it's, house either. It's not 70-70 it's not at my house either. I, I actually have been keeping it around 65. Um, Mine's at like 48. It's, it's been... You're fine. <laughs> so, yeah. Grim would have a good demonstration of a underhumidified cigar if he had any cigars in his box. They're called sticks. Like what? They're crunchy. <laughs> They're crunchy. So, I hope that answers that question. That is good to know. Awesome. Do you feel more knowledgeable, Robert? I do. Ish. I do have a, like an add-on for the underhumidified. I was gifted a cigar uh, from a friend who doesn't smoke cigars, and the cigar was gifted to him, so he didn't have a humidor or anything like that. He gave it to me and said, hey, I know you smoke cigars. I'm not sure this is salvageable. It's been sitting on my dresser for like three or four months. And so I stuck it in the humidor for another three or four months and smoked it, and it was perfect. It uh, it was it was not it had not gone past the uh, point of no return and disassembled itself just by being dry and it was a it was a fuente it was a good cigar nice um, so if you happen to have an issue with your humidor maybe uh, get get that figured out and your cigars will be okay or not you know That's my, good. my uh, your mileage may vary as they say yeah oh yeah you you definitely want to make sure you reseason your uh, humidor every once in a while yeah, I think it's recommended like every six months a lot of people don't do that but you can definitely tell yeah. uh, when it's starting to become not seasoned that humidification will drop a lot quicker I was Speaking recently of... gift oh go ahead no 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 go ahead Zach you first I was just gonna say I was recently gifted a uh, fantastic humidor custom humidor and uh I'm in the process of getting the humidification balanced out. It's a little high right now, but it's not crazy high. It's just just at seventy one. So, but no, that's not crazy awesome. at all. That's no. And speaking yeah. of uh, gifted cigars, I've got a cigar that after I got married, um, my father in law gifted to me, and it's a cigar that he bought when his daughter, my now wife, was born. It's a Bolivar, still in the still in the cellophane. And it's lived in my humidor since we got married, and there is no saving that. It's a nice crispy critter that, you know, uh, just, I can't, I'm not getting rid of it. I was about to say, also, how yellow is that cellophane? I don't know, because it's on the bottom in the corner where I don't really pay it a lot of attention. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it has not seen the light of day. I'm afraid, well, and my father-in-law kept it in his, you know, in his, I guess, where he kept his knickknacks in his drawer. So... Yeah, I don't know that it's... Uh, I know that it's not salvageable, but I can't see me getting rid of it either. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. It's got memories. As long as it doesn't have any critters growing in it, then it's safe. All, all right, right, so... Uh, probably uh, all died out about 10 years ago. <laughs> so, um, lighten up this LFD. Um, it has, a, it has an interesting flavor on the back end. I uh, noticed that kind of right away. Um, not a heavy smoke output, uh, but it's it's a very smooth cigar. Uh, the construction on it is um, very good. Uh, it's very it's very tightly rolled, very tightly wrapped. 
um, it cut clean. I mean, it, it cut really well. No problems there. Um, no film on my mouth, but there is an interesting aftertaste to it. I don't know if anybody else is picking up is that. It, what is it kind of sweet to you? Well, no, sweet. it's not sweet at all. I don't have any but sweetness grim- to it. What did you say, Grimbles? I said a little sweet. Okay. Y'all picking up sweetness? I picked up a yeah, little man. bit. Light up up on did you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do, do anybody look up what uh, what tobacco is in this? Yeah. Do you, do you want the Do you want the rundown, Zach? I would love the rundown. Andy. Alrighty. Well, let's see. According to one of these fancy websites that tells you about cigars. Well, the rundown <laughs> consisted of the Rock, and he goes into a small town, <laughs> and he's looking for. Never, never no, no. <laughs> You're late now. Go keep, for it. Keep going. Keep going. Let's he's get the whole story. Looking, doing for a he's dude, looking for Sean William Scott. Okay. Hmm. He's I'm trying to pull him out of, <laughs> you know, some, some crazy gato that he's looking for in the jungle. Just a cat, man. It's all about a cat. All right. So this cigar is from the wonderful uh, boat cruise destination of the Dominican Republic. It is a ecuadorian habano wrapper with us ecuador sumatra binder and dominican republic filler brought to you by the wonderful people at la flor dominicana i, love and I read all of that straight off the screen thanks well done sir well done yeah so but what do you think about impressive it? my reading uh, yes. uh it's above grade 11 yeah i mean it's impressive i think he does a good job well, what do you think about the cigar? Oh. oh. Is that what we're doing today? <laughs> Sorry. It's late. <laughs> it is late. We haven't done a show this late in, like, ages, and it's kind of awesome. Yeah. We're all liquored up. kind of got uh, that, uh... Except for maybe Grim. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of like an Ewok smile. I loved it. <laughs> um, I, so far, I like it. It's got... Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of spice for me. It's, uh... It's an easy draw. It, the construction's, you know, it feels it feels good in my hands. Um, and that it does. I agree. It's it's burning really well. Uh, like you said, not a whole lot of uh, smoke on the end, the foot, but it's got plentiful smoke during it. You know, with the draw. So uh, yeah, maybe mine's a little too tight. I've got a little. The, I've got some some foot smoke. It's not bad. I don't know if that comes through on camera or not. All right. How about you, Grim? It's my bien. <laughs> Thank God. You even got the culture right with it. So, mm, bravo. It's a Dominican cigar. I think just bravo, sir. Look, I couldn't say it's good again. Like, you guys would expect that from me. I needed something else. Oh, but you I get you the source. You need ship it to the house. You learn how to say that in, like, every language. Just so, you know. We have a list of them on posted notes on the on the monitor. <laughs> Wait, today is it's muy guapo. It's muy, yeah, yeah. It's muy guapo. It's yeah. muy guapo. Right? Do you have anything to add to that, Robert? Not really. It's it's a good cigar. It's it's not overbearing like some that I've had in the past. Um, the output to, to me is good. Input it, it draws well, not too squishy, not too brittle, so it's good. Well, uh, when I was talking about the output, I mean, it's not a bad output, it's just not as a heavy smoke than you know, past couple of cigars I've had. That's what, yeah, that's yeah. I'm about the I mean, it's not like overbearing, like a smoking of the hog nose everywhere, it's, it's not pungent. There you go. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. So how about you, Zach? Uh, also, good, great construction. Definitely, it feels it feels heavy for some reason. It like, does. Yes. Weird. Yeah. Like it's super dense, but the draw is really good. So it's not like overly packed. It might tar up a, a little bit if it if because it's so tight. Um, I don't get pepper, but I do get like a spiciness. Hmm maybe a little cedar 
and the this like it's not pungent it's not like sometimes when you get like a really heavy cigar if you i don't know if any of you do retro hail every now and then um but it doesn't burn to retro hail which is a the reason i often don't retro hail <laughs> because it's like oh that's uncomfortable i don't enjoy that this I is love this pepper but this burns so much on the retro hail yeah i'm not gonna do it exactly the fire in my face is not good but this <laughs> is very pleasant and you get a little bit of that uh, kind of cedary thing going on, which I'm digging. That works. It sounds legit. I believe you. So what was it's the uh, interesting up. thing that you found out today, Zach? Oh, I don't know if this is scientifically proven, so I'm going to prefix this with that. But uh, I heard on the streets, you know, how I'm on the streets Not talking the streets. about cigars. Um that uh, there is a difference between uh, bloom slash plume and mold. I kind of always thought they were the same. This information source seemed to think or, or state that uh, bloom is uh, like crystallized oils. And the way that you can tell the difference is by wiping it off. If it wipes off and then leaves no residue, then it's bloom and it's crystallized oils. If it wipes it off and leaves a spot, then it's supposedly mold. Again, I have no scientific evidence, but I've never seen uh, bloom or plume in my humidor. Uh, down front, you have a, you appear to have a question. Mr. Mr. Andy. Oh, whoa, whoa. hey, thanks, Zach. Um, yeah. <clears throat> you're right. For a long time, there was a is it bloom? You know, is it bloom or plume or is it mold? And uh, there was a long, a long-term study, and I can't remember who the hell did it because it's, I read stuff and then you know keep the important parts, and I don't give a shit who wrote it. After yeah, it was a scientific paper, lots of big words. So you know, oh. I needed Zach to read that or Gibbs. Oh. Um, but that being said, the last. The last I read, it said it didn't matter. They're both mold. There's there's no difference. Um, and that yeah, depending, so that goes and that goes kind of go back to the original question of that Robert asked is is you know the whole overhumidification thing, right? Yeah. Um, you know, mold grows when your sticks are stagnant, and that's why. You, during, you know, like once a quarter or so, you go and rotate all your cigars. I'm not that great at that, but then I've also got cigars that have been in my humidor for going on 13 years. Um, and some of those have had mold. Uh, and there's a way to, if you don't smoke it with the mold on, there's a way to, to kill, to semi kill the mold. No, it's not wipe your cigar down with Clorox. What? Darn, I was going to do that. I use whiskey. Um, oh. it depending seem like on how it would work, <laughs> it does doesn't it? <laughs> Kills ninety nine point nine percent of all germs. Um, and you, and you, inhaling inhaling mold or bleach may not be good for you. I, I can't guarantee that uh, your, your, your mileage may vary. Go get them like Um, <laughs> the, the uh. The method that I've used to restore those cigars because I haven't gotten to the point where the molds anything other than white you, you know it's still white it's still loose uh, it'll rub off with a little distilled water and then you stick it in the freezer for a couple of for like 24 to 48 hours and then stick it in the fridge for three or four days to bring it you know just to gradually bring it back to temperature and then you can put it in a separate humidor with uh other recovered sticks. Yeah, that's interesting. This, I mean, that's, this, this is, is a, a long hot answer. topic. Sorry, I think it's a great, you know, mention because it it is on a lot of the boards. You know, is this mold? Is this plume? Is this mold? Is this plume? And probably in ninety nine case, ninety nine percent of the cases, they're saying it's mold, throw it away. It's mold, throw it away. It's mold. Throw it away. If, if you're really interested in it, do a little bit more research. Uh, sounds like Zach, you know, found something that was an interesting find. Research it, you know, look into it. Yeah. Think, you know, 
it, of course, is at your own risk if you have bloom or plume. Um, so take that as, you know, just a little bit of advice that is it really worth it? Um, right. I have had mold in my humidor before, but never on the yeah, cigars. I, yeah, I've spotted mold in my humidor before, and I've gotten it cleaned off really easily. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, not on the cigars. So thanks for bringing that up, man. Mm. Thanks for reminding me to bring it up, because I totally forgot that already. <laughs> 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 I'm pretty sure I was supposed to bring it up earlier. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so, uh, messing around with things, I thought, uh, especially since watching back some of our episodes, we talk about movies and we talk about cigars, of course, all the time. So, I wanted to bring some movie cigar trivia questions. To see how well we can answer those. <laughs> Anybody interested? Uh, I'll answer it all the time. Okay. I mean, I love trivia. I'm not always good at it, but let's do it. Hey, I mean, it's worth a shot. All right. All right first one is a really softball one. It's, it's a very easy one. Uh, in which film does Arnold Schwarzenegger's character famously smoke a cigar as a symbol of relaxation after a battle? To the Predator. 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 See? I told you. This is a softball question. It's easy. All right. Let's move on to something. I realize you're holding the hand of mine. Now, ru- <laughs> now I'm rude. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you can hold up hands. That's fine. Um, can we just hold which, hands? If you want to hold hands, that's cool too. You know, this it, this might be traumatic for you. I hear that train of coming. Coming around the bit. No, mm-hmm. sorry. All right. So, which James Bond movie? Features Pierce Brosnan's Bond sharing a cigar with the villain, Bernard, highlighting a temporary truce. Goldeneye? It's only Pierce Brosnan uh, 007 I can think of. Tomorrow Never Dies? No. The world is not enough. Dang it. That's it. Graham got it. I was like, there's only like one more, I think. <laughs> well, I kept I kept trying to figure out who the villain was, and that that's the uh that's the, the news guy, the the news entrepreneur that's making the news himself. Ah, uh, uh, right. It's been a while since I've seen that one. All right, I, let's go to the next I worked one. at a blockbuster. Please tell me you showed the shirt. I did. I, 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 making a blockbuster. Shirt or boobs, either way. Making Show me them tits, Graham. I mean what? <laughs> I said it. I'm always interested. All right. So, in what movie does Clint Eastwood's character, the man with no name, frequently smoke a small cigar, contributing to his tough and terse image? I think Grim was first. This is a pretty easy one too. Okay. Uh, uh, the good, the bad, go with the Zach, because God dang That's it, you're not say. Zach. I was gonna say the same answer. Great we're playing for the Let points. Let pull these up to the matter. side so I can actually see you open your... Open your right, oh, you're, you're moving stuff around right. on your laptop. Yeah, I'm moving stuff around the laptop so I can actually try to see you guys raise your hand. All right, so which Quentin Tarantino film includes a scene where a character, uh, character offers another character a Cuban cigar leading to a discussion about their rarity in the U.S.? Grimble. Jackie Brown? No. Oh, that was really? going to be my guess also. Yeah, well, it wasn't Pulp Fiction. Did you raise your hand? No, I'm just kidding. It wasn't Thinking Pulp Fiction. Out. Shut up. Snakes in a plane? No, that wasn't Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> Sorry, I was had a Samuel L. Jackson thought there. <laughs> I'm just going to start naming them here in a second. We got Reservoir Dogs. We got... Uh, I mean, Reservoir I, Dogs I was going to be my other guess. Yeah, that was my, right, my who, next guess, but I'm trying to remember when that might have been in the... But right, y'all they up. had that club scene, but yeah. I don't think that was in the club scene. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. know. The Django, Unchained. Django. That was a couple more Great down the movie. list because it was Kill Bill, Kill Bill Two, and then I'm forgetting <laughs> something. Oh, yeah. the Glorious Bastards. I mean, I mean there's the only Bastards. there's only nine, so you know the Hateful Eight. Right. Let's go there. Oh yeah, um, I always right. forget about the Hateful Eight. That was that I don't was know a pretty awesome that. movie. Yeah, it's, it's a great movie. Awesome. It, it is an awesome it, movie. 
it's a yeah, it's a, like a stage play movie. Yeah. Like yes. it's done in like a kind of stage manner. We I actually saw a special screening of that in Knoxville. It was on like seventy millimeter film. Mm. I've got like oh, some sort of commemorative great. thingy. It looks so cool. Like I didn't think it would matter, but it it looked awesome. It straight up would, yeah. I, I could see that yeah. movie film, yeah. I have I have honestly awesome. wondered ever since that movie what I could hold, hold on to for myself to, to be a Lincoln letter. You know, like to have something that powerful in your hand that you can just completely, you know, make up. I've never thought of it. Can, I can't, I don't have an answer. Like, I, I haven't found anything. Jump on it. All right. So, and this is going to be the last, last question for this round. And then in which movie does Denzel Washington's character smoke a cigar in a scene that helps establish his character's sophistication and control? It's like when he background music. De, de, de. Hmm. Uh, maybe the Equalizer. Ooh, no. Oh, good movie though. Really good movie. Both of them. I liked uh, all three of them. them. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched the last one yet. It's on the list. Um, it's good. It's not the one on the sub. Not the one on the sub. Because I can't remember the name of that one either. Oh, Crimson Dawn. The other one. Uh, Crimson Tide. Yeah. What's the name of that movie? Oh, maybe I'm thinking. King I'm thinking about the movies. Dark. Got nothing on me. Fuck of Eli. That he's was the a good only movie person too, that though. knows the that's entire Bible, and he's not sophisticated, sir. That's that. That's the wrong answer. To get there. <laughs> but the cigar wasn't involved. He might have smoked, and I just don't remember. Give I up. give up. Yeah. Training day. Oh, so gosh. that popped in my uh, head, but I could. I, I can see that in my head now. Yeah. Yeah. Training day. He, he was freaking awesome in that movie. <laughs> he was freaking awesome in that movie. Wait, wait, wait. Side note, Denzel Washington, uh, pretty much a safe bet on the movie, usually. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Good actor, great movie. Oh, Denzel Name Washington. A... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Name a bad movie with Denzel Washington in Crimson Tide? Ooh, that's harder. I think that's a harder <laughs> movie. I like Crimson right Tide. Oh, no, I... I I remembered enjoying Crimson Tide. I just uh, I worked with a guy in the Navy, and he just like hates that movie because it's. I, I think it's Crimson Tide. They the the Navy like the military. You, anytime you're going to mention like their branch, they like give you shit to promote their branch. And the Navy was like read the script and went, "Now nah, we're out." <laughs> Damn. Yeah. yeah. If you can, that's not how this works. Name out of this. That's yeah. not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Now, if I'm wrong about Crimson Tide, let, let me know in the uh, in the comments down below. <laughs> yeah. No, I just found it. Crimson Tide. Yep. Yeah. Crimson Are you Tide. watching the clips? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I, I hit IMDb. So I was curious if, if I was like, yeah, no, there is a bad Denzel movie. And the only one I can find so far is Virtuosity. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's a good yeah. for a bad movie. That one was a oh. pass on. I put it together, but yeah. then I didn't want to watch it. Yeah. Uh, about, is that how Russell Crowe? Where are we at in our cigar? Do what else? Virtuosity? Yeah. No. We're about that halfway. Russell Crowe also? Yeah, I'm about halfway. Uh, let's go, let's go sure. Yeah, Russell Crowe's in it. Probably not. Yeah. Russell Crowe's the bad guy, I think. Yeah. I think so too. I'm going to. I'm going to say we're about halfway, and let's start a... <clears throat> I'll just give a checkup on this one. Um, the aftertaste that I was I was thinking at the beginning has seemed to have dissipated. It's gone away. Uh, the, the smoke output has not gotten stronger, hadn't gotten more. Uh, so I'm not experiencing quite what y'all are experiencing. Um, but it, it's a good taste. I really like the taste of this cigar. Uh, it's really smooth. It's it's um, the construction on it reminds me, especially with the smoothness of it. Like Andy was saying, with the touch, it reminds me a lot. Um, if it didn't have the veins in it, it reminds me a lot of a, of a Davidoff. Hmm. Um, as far hmm. as the smoothness and everything goes, um, I don't know. I've got a lot but, of veins in mine. Okay. Uh, I, I got a couple. It's not a lot, but it's a couple. And, but if it didn't have any, it would be a David all hands down. You know, as far as like the feel of it, it's just that, that buttery smooth feel. 
Yeah, um, but I smoked that David off uh, our grab bag, and you're right. The tobacco feel is very similar. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's very similar. Tastes different. Yo, yeah, yeah, tastes tastes way way different, but uh, the the feel of it is is very similar. Uh, what do you think, Andy? Uh, I'm gonna go with yeah. I'm with you. It's uh, looking back at the notes from the website in regards to where it says its strength is. You know, it, it, they're claiming it's a full. <clears throat> I don't know that I'm feeling like it's a full cigar with the with the amount of uh, flavor and draw and smoke output. But I'm with you. It's really smooth. Uh, I'm trying to creamy. That's that's kind of the word I'm looking for. Yeah, it's like, a good good description. Like butter. Yeah, I agree. How about you, Graham? I'm a slowpoke smoker, so, you know, ketchup. Go on, Graham. Oh, sorry, me. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's doing all right so far. It's, uh, it's, it's not a full body, I don't think. Like, that's, that's, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Didn't have the smoke I put it for that, but, uh, construction's pretty good. The, uh, there's no tunneling. It's it's smoking smoothly. I'm enjoying it. Robierto. It, it, it's funny you mentioned David off. David off. Um, sorry. Because when before I even lit it, I was like smelling, and I was like, that's like a David David off. I mean, it's very much like. It's very smooth. It's no harshness. No taste in the mouth, and all that. Yeah, I like it. A lot. It's got, <laughs> there's something about it. it um, but again, I'm going with Zach. And it, it doesn't have that taste of a Davidoff, but it uh, it has a lot of remnants of you know hitting the, the feels and the um, smoothness of a Davidoff. But go ahead, Zach. Uh, so it has... I'm not sure it's quite to a full for me, but it it is it is like getting stronger. Like when I retrohale it, it's it's got a little more bite to it. It's not not as like easy to do without noticing it. <laughs> um, but I am I'm getting more spice, but it's not pepper. It's not black pepper, which is usually a thing I'm drawn to. But I am drawn to this. Um, it's not quite Christmas spice, which I heard is a is another word people use to describe a spice in cigars. It's not cardamom. Oh, God dang it! Yes. <laughs> but uh, I'm really enjoying it. It's uh, it's very good. I think I think it's just a goal of Andy's to keep Christmas year round on our podcast, and that's no, how just he put it in there. Just by saying cardamom. Okay, think of a Halloween spice. I'd probably throw that instead, but, you know, look at nobody spice. really wants. No, fuck pumpkin spice. It's not quite pumpkin spice. What about sporty spice? Or baby spice? There we go. <laughs> now we're talking. Mm, posh spice. I think it's I more mean, of a posh tell spice. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I just did. <laughs> Thank you. Now I know. <laughs> so you all no, we're getting... we can get it on Wish.com. That's it. <laughs> Our Timu. Timu. Timu has taken that, you know, crown over. So Right. Yeah, at Timu, some point you, Amazon. You, you just need to like mine all of our recordings and get like every time we say cardamom and just be like cardamom come to <laughs> <laughs> Like a super cut of that. <laughs> yeah. No no, that and then we awesome. actually get when we when we get a cigar that actually tastes like cardamom, that's just the real I'm gonna play. For the, the next, like, you know, 30 seconds, you're just going to see cardamom, 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 God damn it, caramel, cardamom, 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 Christmas, cardamom, cardamom, Christmas, pine tree, cardamom. That's like, oh, yeah. I am getting some sweetness that I wasn't getting before or didn't notice before. But I yeah, guess what, I, what Graham was talking about. It's it's yeah, not well, like in the smoke. It's like on my lips. Mm-hmm. I think it's on the wrapper. It doesn't it taste like it's sugar dipped. It's not. It's uh. It could be the natural sweetness. Yeah. Because yeah. I tasted that as I did a, you know, a pre-light draw, but it wasn't a, well, you know, whatever. 
I'm cheating a little bit, and I kind of licked it a little bit, and th- I I got the dang sweetness you were talking about. I just did that, and yeah, it's got a hint, very small hint of sweetness. Yeah, but it, it, it tastes like natural part of the leaf, not a not addition. Yeah, it's definitely no deadwood. You know, deadwood right. sweetness. Thank God. <laughs> Sorry, Gibbs. I am not sorry. I still like them. I still like them. There's five of us. We've all got different palettes. This is true. I don't hate them. Mm. They're just not what I'm drawn to. Yeah, about to say they're not your cup of tea. So going back to iced tea. uh, Well, tonight it's a glass of uh, whatever the hell this is. Oh, so yeah, what is what? What is everybody drinking? I've got uh, Traveler Whiskey, which is a new Buffalo Trace product. It's uh, it's pretty good. Reminds me of Buffalo Trace a little bit. Hey, Zach. Yeah. What, Imagine that. What, what, what did we tell Kristen? What did we get? The uh, bench Benchmark, right? Hmm. Yeah, the benchmark. benchmark. Yeah, the, does it the top floor? I think that I've got. Yeah, top floor. This is the this is the bottom of the bottle. Nice. It's that is like horrible. That's also a Buffalo Trace product, and it is like their. I, I would call it the bottom shelf product for Buffalo Trace, but it is solidly a good bourbon. They have a great product. Totally, a good product. Yeah. Sazerac makes good shit. What you drink it on there, Graham? No, the uh, other Graham. Oh, uh, well, we have I another Graham. I still have a volume problem. Like I can't. Anyways, uh, Mountain Dew because I need to go shopping and I haven't done that yet. Dude, it's like Fair enough. fucking late. Where are you going shopping? Walmart. Like tomorrow. Oh. <clears throat> it's like I'm yeah, done with the point of bed because for some reason we decided to do this at one a.m. And just for you uh, old fogies like us, it's it's ten o'clock where we are. So <laughs> it's like one a.m. for us because we're already asleep usually. Old fogies like yeah, y'all. I'm up. I'm trying. Can confirm. Gibbs usually in bed by now. I probably look What's terrible with the bright light and the absolute like lack of sleep at this point. Like I, you know, I'm probably like <laughs> either he's stoned or he's sleeping in front of the you know while he's smoking. It's weird. Or it's both. <laughs> or it's both. But Robert is right. He's he's the night owl of the group. He'll stay up till you know tomorrow and then go to bed. I was up at 2 a.m. this morning. I went to sleep and then got up at 6.30. Yeah, fuck that. Ouch. Yeah, fuck that. I did that on Thursday. Yeah, Yeah, fuck that shit, too. Most of the day, Zach, on Thursday. I did work two hours on Thursday. And took a nap later. They were very rough two hours. We tried to make it difficult. It didn't work. No, that's good. I spent uh, like at least thirty minutes of that talking to Gibbs, so it was a good time. <laughs> it was fun. Um, all right. So, so, do we want to continue trivia? I actually got some more questions. Go ahead, buddy. Sure, why not? Fire away. All right, why not? Why not? Why not? All right. I'm doing so, a lot better than I thought I was going to. So yeah. Yes. This is a good one. What? What film features Jeff Bridges as the dude? who at one point declines a cigar, staying true to his laid-back character. Iron Man. I don't see everybody's hand Really? <laughs> Iron Man. What is Which The is Big funny. Lebowski, Alex? That, that is the, it is The Big Lebowski, <laughs> but I think it's funny you went Iron Man, because in Iron Man, he does indulge just the cigars. He does. Yeah. Even though it's not lit. Ever. Ever. And, you can't do that. Watch Marvel that movie. movie. It's Tony's cigar. Yeah. In any in any right. scene that he has a cigar, it's not lit. He's just carrying it around, sticking it in his mouth, takes it out. It's not lit. So there's a fun little fact for you. I can imagine that's kind of like eating in a film. It's like one of those things that's really hard to, to do all day. <laughs> you know, so no, my, I don't... Actually, I think I brought ahead, this up in a, in a previous podcast, but I'll, I'll bring it up again. It does, it does question... Um, you know, Tony Stark fights Obadiah Stane in Iron Man, which is the, the dude. And then in uh, Avengers, he calls Thor Point Break. Not Point Break. Uh, 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 he makes reference to him being the dude. 
Oh no, in yeah. game because he was fat and had the in game the Lebowski suit on. So he's right. aware of the dude and knows what the dude looks like, and the and doesn't connect the fact that he murdered that dude like fucking you know a decade prior in movies. Did did he murder him though, or did he allow him to die? A, a little yes uh, to both. Yes, yes. allowed him to <laughs> suffer the consequences of his actions. Yeah. I could warn him that this is about to suck. Later, bitch! (laughs) (laughs) Sayonara! Have a great day! Alright. In which Martin Scorsese film is Robert De Niro's character a notorious gangster smoked cigars, adding to his authoritative demeanor? Scarface. That's not De Niro. Not man. Robert De Niro. Oh, that's not De Niro. Sorry. My that bad. was Pacino, right? That's Pacino. Is that uh, Gangs of New York? I was going to say Chicago. No, it wasn't De Niro was either. De Niro was Casino. Casino. Oh. Was not no. Casino. Was it a God? No, God, uh, De Niro wasn't in any of the Godfathers, was he? Nope. Uh, nope. Wait, you know, he was in Godfathers too, wasn't he? Wasn't he young? Young, yeah. Uh, because Pacino and, and De Niro were both in that, but they never met. That's right. There's maybe, like a yeah, you may be right. Sorry. So I apologize. Was uh, it Mean Streets? No. I don't, I don't know. I can't believe anybody haven't figured Ronan? this one out. This was this is a really good one. Uh, Ronan wasn't a Scorsese film. Nope. Yeah, no, I got this. Deep. Hey, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh no. <laughs> is it uh crap. Scent of a woman? No. No, he's not a gangster in that. That's Pacino. <laughs> and that's Al Pacino as well. That's oh, Pacino. Right. Yeah. Dang it. I get... uh I feel bad up. now. They're both excellent. We lost <laughs> this one, bud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good fellas. Oh ah, damn. Good fellas. That was a great movie. Great movie. That was a good movie. All right, next question. What action comedy features Will Smith and Martin Lawrence as two cops where Smith's character is known for smoking cigars? Men in Black, duh. Uh, Men in Black. <laughs> so it's about, I'm pretty sure it's Bad Boys. <laughs> pretty sure it's Bad Boys. <laughs> it's definitely Bad Boys. But was it all well, three? Men in Black were the original Bad Boys, okay? Let's just let's put that out there. <laughs> Bad Boys <laughs> Bad Boys came out before Men in Black. Yeah, true. No, crap. My joke doesn't work. <laughs> Damn you, Ben. All right, I'm doing so right. bad at this trivia that it, uh, you know. Gladys not a drinking game. game, though. Yeah. Gladys not a drinking game. I would be <laughs> under God. the table. God. <laughs> I don't remember the, nec- the next one, and I'm surprised if it is in there, I'll be surprised. Back to the Future. Uh, no. Oh, sorry, you hadn't asked. In, in, in which film does Johnny Depp play a character who smokes a handmade cigar, uh, signifying his manhood, eccentricity? There we go, eccentricity and uniqueness. Fear and loathing in Las Vegas. No, that was going to be my guess. Ooh, Pirates of the Caribbean. That a good guess, one, though. though. Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh. Uh, the Curse of the Black Pearl, which. That that that, that that is mind blowing considering that's a Disney film, and they would let him actually smoke in it. So I don't think that was in I the film, but I got the uniqueness and all that stuff and just went with it. Yeah, so I don't remember him I'm ever smoking in the, in the. I don't either. Me either. It may have been like one scene. Maybe he it did wasn't go lit. to the bar in, in Tortuga the one time. I wonder if he did it there. But I don't yeah, remember them. Was- Smoking in any of those movies. Oh, yeah, I could exactly. be totally wrong. So we might have to check that one. I have to double check that one. All right. And last question for the night. Which movie set in the 1960s involves a scene where characters smoke cigars after a successful casino heist, symbolizing their victory? Ocean's Eleven. That's a hard one. Ocean's. Yeah, it's Ocean's Eleven. The original. 
Ocean's Eleven, yeah. not not the remake um, with uh, Clooney, the original. Yeah. I've not seen the original. It's good. Yeah, it's good. You should watch it. I should. I flex it. Sometimes let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I worry. I worry about like some uh, some older movies that have like a reputation of being excellent, like uh, the Italian Job and oh, man. the new good version original of the movie. Italian Job. The original movie is uh, is good, but the new movie is was like written for like my generation, so it was right, like yeah. it was better. It clicked a little better. Yeah. Charlie's Theron. That's, that's all I'm saying. Version. Do what? Charlie's Throne. That's all I'm saying. That is a fair uh, fair statement. <laughs> I'm just gonna go with yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to go most deaf, but whatever. <laughs> most deaf. I had a bad experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still use that line today. That's all I got for trivia. Well done, sir. That's a lot of uh, a lot of questions. Yeah, I thought it. I thought it'd be a fun little time. See, see, you know, reminisce a little bit about. Movies that we've seen that have cigars in them and that we didn't even remember that had cigars in them. I just want to do movie trivia now. What was the cigar called in Independence Day? Who gives a shit? It smelled the buttery dance? alien. I don't know. The Victory Dance. Uh, vi- yeah. Damn it! I was about to I say mean, that. Yeah. Yeah. Victory Dance. Victory Dance. I just want one of those cigar tubes. Those look mm-hmm. awesome. A much nicer quality than the cigar tubes I have. <laughs> they're just like undercrown tubos, you know, the the little aluminum tubes, and they're very flimsy. Um, you're flimsy. You're flimsy. Yeah, probably. It's cold. What do you want? <laughs> it is a little chilly. I uh, I, mean, I debated starting a fire in the fire pit, and I uh, kind of wish I had now. <laughs> I didn't start the fireplace, hoping that I would. Yeah, I think it's uh, in the fifties here now. Yeah, that's about what it is here. Yeah, but we're in Louisiana, so we're real weak to the to the cold. <laughs> it's not one hundred and ten and humidity and temperature. We don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird to have having this much clothing on. Fair. I mean, we do like you half naked for the show. Not, not the night, man. Are- it spikes our viewership at least one. <laughs> <laughs> Must be the one time Kristen watches. That's it. Yeah. We we just like Tails wearing pants though. Let her know, like, hey, Andy's taking his shirt off, you might want to check it out. <laughs> Look how drunk we got Andy. He's getting undressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Alright, since you brought it up. Oh, shit. Let's, let's get personal. Let's get personal. What, what, oh. what is an embarrassing thing you've done drunk? That's not proper for this particular chat. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. I threw up in a garbage can in a casino restaurant. Very nice. <laughs> you know, those free drinks, they have a cost. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I, uh, I, mean, I would like to plead the fifth on all... Drinking questions. Uh, I just feel like it's safer. Okay. I regret. I actually know. regret uh, saying anything. <laughs> can we edit that out? <laughs> Arguing with Gibbs and other people about the fact that yeah, I can fucking drive home. Oh, that was an interesting being, one. And then getting driven home. Yeah, he didn't win that one. I lost. No, he lost that. Argument. And then walked in the and then walked in the door straight to the uh, half bath in the in the downstairs and Technicolor yawned. Okay, I got one for you. So, I, I'll give you I'll give you a pre-story before I give you this story. Okay. Back at a, back at a certain games. yeah, back at a certain place um, that sold two liter bottles of Coke in a place that they really had no business selling like two liter bottles of Coke. Um, we would take a couple out into the parking lot, shake them up really hard, toss them, and see how far they would launch. 
That's right. uh, first of all, that sounds amazing. And I'm already. I laughing, like that idea already. So, I mean, it was a good time. That's why we did it. Uh, so, in one of the few times that I've been drunk in my life, uh, I decided I wanted to recreate this, and I had a two liter, shook it up really hard. And then I went to toss it and I forgot in our method because we found out a method to doing this and not getting hurt. I completely threw all that out the window and I threw it to where the cap blasted that way and the bottle went this way. <laughs> and uh, I did get hit, but I played it off fairly well by limping off to where nobody could see me. <laughs> <laughs> was, was that a like uh, you want to know how I got these scars kind of moment? <laughs> Pretty much, because I mean it was it was awful because it 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 hit me dead center in my chest. No, oh. like bam, bam. Ouch. and Ouch. then you just, all you saw was like psh, you just saw just big like I don't know cloud of coke, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, that was probably my dumbest moment, Robert. <laughs> Nobody else wants to share. Yeah, I'm gonna. I, shared I already shared. I'm gonna go with Grandma on this one. I'm gonna plead the fifth. And that's okay. And that's okay. Yes. Like you know, I mean, I, like I just have it's, terrible it's stories. Right. Like I don't, you know, like I, I told a, I, I almost got arrested by a ton of cop. I, I was fucking grim. Like you know, <laughs> the story is great, but I don't want to admit you that. Need to be like, sober for that. Public setting, huh? I didn't think you'd have to be. Drink. I didn't think you'd have to be drunk for that, but. Yeah. Is the statute of limitations uh, ended on that, or? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking grim. <laughs> okay, so I, uh, oh, god damn it, I, I'm at a. <laughs> yeah, he's telling the story. Great time, great time. I'm at a concert. I'm not going to name which one. The band's defunct at this point, anyways. And I don't think any of them would ever hear. But I don't want them to be like, oh, oh you know. Um. I went, I saw the show, we went out outside, because they played at a bar, um, we went outside in the, in the, in the, uh, parking lot, and we're playing cards, and we're all drinking, and, you know, having a good time, because it's a fucking concert, and this, this cop walks up, and he goes, hey, which one of you guys want to go to jail tonight, we're all laughing, I was like, that guy, because this man sucked tonight, and, you know, we all laugh, good time, and he's like, no, seriously, which one of you guys want to go to jail, because you guys are publicly drinking right now. And we're like, we're at the venue. Like, what are you talking about? You know, he's like, oh, yeah, no. So I was like, all right, cool. So they're like, we'll get rid of the drinks. Me being a smart ass, so I finished mine and threw it away. Um, which he didn't like. And he handcuffed me. And, he, and then as I was drunkenly explaining to him that, that, that he knew who the fuck I was, I'm fucking grim. Um, the bar manager at one point in time comes out. Uh, and they're like, you know, hey, do you know this guy? Because, like, the band's, like, we're all laughing at this point because I'm going to jail. Um, and they're like, do you know this guy? And the lead singer of the band goes, yeah, he's fucking grim. So the bar... <laughs> <laughs> so the, the bar manager pulls the cop over. They they bicker for a few minutes. He comes back and he's like, hey, you know, they're saying you gotta ride home. Just go home. You know, just call him right. You know, you be fucking grim. I was like, I will, sir. Uh, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah. See. Yeah. It's, I, I, I have. I I, that's not the story I thought you would go with. But since it's not my, story, not my story, I'm not going to tell it. Which one? Uh, James uh, house. James's house. Uh, so we did a bachelor party at our friend's house, and we were doing it low key because his wife was trying to like really. It was like you know, no, no strip club or I'll kill you kind of thing. And I was actually more afraid of her than I was of giving him a good time. So we went to our friend's house and we're we're drinking, playing poker, the whole shebang. And and dude's like, hey, let's pull out fireworks. And I was like, that's fucking, that's like the best idea ever. <laughs> um. Anyways, like I've never heard about it. I think I was shooting bottle rockets out of my crotch. <laughs> no, sir. no sir no sir you were not shooting bottle rockets out of your crotch i was shooting the bottle rockets <laughs> off your crotch yeah yeah that I mean, makes so. just yeah. as much sense i'm just saying yeah so <laughs> don't drink kids <laughs> i don't know that's not really a turn to not drink i'm just saying well we were we were dumbasses that night because not only we were firing stuff off that shouldn't have been fired off of 
um, we were literally taking the bottle rockets and just throwing them, right? And we didn't know which direction they were going to go. There were several of them that came right back at us. Oh, hell, I've done that sober. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, to be fair, though, that, the house itself like was like 15 to 20 feet off the, off the ground. So when we were flinging them, like they were going down into like this pit of hell and getting shot off. You know, so really we had like that little bit of warning that, you know, it was coming our way if it did. But because we were so far up, by the time they did get to us, they were ready to explode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they awesome. did not hesitate either. <laughs> no. And, and you know, like idiots, instead of after the first, you know, one, you know, almost exploding in our face, we're like, let's do it again. I do miss the prime of our life, you know, those good times. A time when video cameras weren't around. <sighs> Thank God. No, wait. That was actually filmed. Uh, firing off of Grim's crotch was filmed. Yeah. Let's cut to that right now. <laughs> we, we still have film. it. Here we go. <laughs> and that was like that was like 15 years ago. So if anybody has that footage at this point, I'd be fucking surprised. I mean, it's grainy as fuck, but you know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely one megapixel, though. Is that something I would have seen on E-Bombs World back in the day? <laughs> you know, knowing our friend, it's possible. Amazing. That dude was all about, was, like, you know, taking it too far on, on, on certain things. You ain't lying. I'm still enjoying the shit out of this cigar, though. I was just thinking, uh, LFD makes a, makes a good product. They do make a good product. Um, this is maybe the second LFD I've ever had. Yeah, and uh, I'm impressed. I've probably had six or seven different LFDs. A lot of time I go looking for the double Ligero and it's out of stock or or in a in a package that's more than I want to spend on a, a cigar at the moment. Um, and I get like this little five pack that's a pretty decent deal usually um, on the the interwebs and. Uh, it's just a five pack of Robustos that are all excellent. They're all a little different. So is it just none of like a, a no, yeah, the same Sampler one. pack? Yeah, okay. it comes in like a little wooden box, cool. and which I didn't know when I bought it. I'm like, oh, fancy, <laughs> fancy, fancy. You you actually. You're, you intrigued me about LFDs, man. Um, when I was in the Dominican Republic, I wanted to try to find some there. Um, I found oh, yeah. one. I found one there. And it was between that and an Ashton. And the LFD was a, definitely a, a dark Maduro. And we were looking for something a little bit lighter because at that point we had smoked so many Maduros. I was like, let's, let's yeah. do something a little bit lighter. Let's go with a Connie. So there was a Connecticut... Um, Ashton, we went with it instead, but I, I kind of wish I would have got an LFD in the Dominican Republic. That'd be cool. Because you can't get it from a fresher source. That's where it is. That's yeah, I'd like to get a... things I've, I've heard. Sorry. Oh, uh, I was going to say uh, fresh fresh cigar is not always the best cigar. Oh, what yeah. I understand. You're right about that. Um, we went to, Andy and I went to a uh, Aganorsa is that, is that the right word? Yeah, Agnorosa. 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 Whichever way you want Gibbs to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not Agnorosa, you son of a bitch. At Agnorosa uh, event at a local shop, and there, they had a like special cigar, and that had, that had just been rolled and distributed to the to the dealer or to the the reps for these events, and uh, the rep smoked it and, and said like that's not ready yet. It needs to sit in the humidor for a couple weeks. <laughs> I don't know what's, what they taste like if they're too fresh, but uh, it's still in my humidor. I haven't smoked it yet. I think I smoked mine a couple of weeks ago. And it oh, was, yeah? Yeah, it was good. Nice. It was, it, was, it was really good, actually. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I mean, it it's, it's hit and miss. Uh, honestly, I've been to a couple of events that they did hand roll cigars at the event, but both times when I went to those events, it, the hand roll was magnificent it was great nice I've never, I've never done a like 
a hand roll here. Go smoke that. Yeah. I, I want to, though. It seems cool. Gibbs. It's uh, fun. Remind me if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, and my memory's old. Um, Cigar Factory New Orleans, don't they roll all theirs right there? You can pick one up off the table. Yeah. Just about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the then again, I like the presentation. Orleans. Yeah, it's it's if you ever if you ever get a chance to go down to New Orleans, go to the New Orleans Cigar Factory, right? Um, they, they have a couple of locations now, but when uh, when I yeah, was they're there, both in New Orleans. Yeah, they're both in New Orleans. They're just in you know separate parts of New Orleans. Um, but when I went in there, the uh, place was really freaking cool. Like in the back, you could just see people on tables just rolling cigars, rolling cigars, rolling cigars. They have <laughs> stacks of them. And literally, you could have what they have in the display case, you know, ready for you. Or you could literally get one that they just rolled. Um, That's and you have cool. your choice. And, and yeah, they do it right there in front of you. So if you ever want just like a hand rolled cigar, just walk in there and grab you one. Nice. Field trip, Zach. I'd like to. What, five and a half hours? Mm-hmm. I mean... Let's go. It's, Screw I mean, my plans for tomorrow. It's worth it, man. <clears throat> Counterpoint. Uh, Austin is also five and a half hours. And they have Black's Barbecue, which um, will change your life. I don't know. I've had Justin's Barbecue, so... Eh, it's pretty life-changing right there, too. I mean, it's shit. It's good. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's very bad. Very bad. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. Yeah. On the appropriate scale. Thank you. Chris makes pretty good barbecue also. Yeah. The same. And since nobody knows who the fuck we're talking about. I'm just leaving it as first names and could be any any Chris and Justin. That's right. Yep. Any Chris and Justin. So any, anybody named Chris or Justin, they're making barbecue, go ahead and get it from them. Because it's yes, like as a rule, as a rule, that's the only qualifications you need. <laughs> Both of the people we're talking about are uh, are exceptional at that, but they do. <laughs> Let's hope you know the same people. Really, is what we're getting at. Yeah, yeah, right. I hope so. So, if, you don't, if there's ever a Chris or Justin in the Shreveport area, there you go. Yeah, that'll work. Get barbecue from them. There's yeah, plenty. But if you're ten miles down the road, fuck it, they don't know what they're doing. That's right. <laughs> or as the Chris told me, uh, if you go to a restaurant and you don't see smoke and they can't tell that they can smoke their own meats at the restaurant, you may not want to eat their barbecue. That, 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 is a, that, actually, well. that is a good rule of thumb for any barbecue restaurant. If you do not smell the barbecue before you get in the restaurant, you probably don't want to eat there. So we went to a, uh, we went to a Mexican. The wife and I actually you know, had a mini date. <clears throat> Last oh, night, nice. yeah, and uh, went to the new re- Mexican restaurant. That's okay. So there's a sh- metric shit ton of Mexican restaurants in the area. Um, Zach can confirm. Yes, um, but we went to the new one that's right here behind the house. They've only been open maybe a month, uh, but they have one of those fancy robotic waiters. Heard about that? What was that Provide- like? Uh, since I didn't order drinks from the bar, uh, it didn't deliver our drink to us, but it was really cool to watch it navigate through the people, the tables and the chairs to deliver drinks to tables. Uh, right as we were wrapping up our meal and paying and whatnot, it delivered a drink to the table next to us. And the lady that had ordered the drink just kind of looked at it like, uh, all right, what am I supposed to do? Cause it just stops at your table. You tip the motherfucker. That's what you do. I don't say you get tip it. Well, obviously, it's the way it's set up. The drinks are on trays behind the behind the front face plate, so you have yeah. to reach behind, you know, and get the drink. But I don't. She didn't re- realize that, and the waitress was right there. And just, Here's your drink. Um, but the face, because it's got a little animated face on the front that looks mm-hmm. like a cat, and that you can pet <laughs> its ears and it'll it'll talk. Because our waitress actually made it come over to us and stop. So that we could see it, and uh, my youngest will uh, have a blast. Forget eating anything there for him, but uh, it's going to be a life changing experience for him. He will probably sit there and talk about it for months. He will talk about it for months. You got it. Yes, Zach knows. Yes. Um, Same thing. thing, uh, There's a there's a Chinese restaurant near us 
that does the same thing. And um, my my daughter found out that it will sing Happy Birthday. Oh, that's oh. awesome. Yeah, so even though it wasn't her birthday, we took her there. <laughs> Just so <laughs> the robot could sing Happy Birthday to her. Well, that's amazing. Whatever makes you feel better, right? Yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> It did. It came up, sang happy birthday to it, did a little dance, and then went back to where I was supposed to go. It was, it was pretty cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm, I'm imagining kind of a R2-D2 thing, but I'm pretty sure it's not that. <laughs> no, it's like Andy's described. It's got like two two different uh, tiers of trays. Yep. Where, you know, gotcha. They just put a tray on it and it just, roll, you know, just kind of rolls out. But yeah, So it it's not cool R2-D2 sang- with the little tray on top. That would be awesome. Yeah. On the sand barge or whatever the thing was. Yeah. Java. On Java sand barge. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I feel like they missed it by not doing that. <laughs> Maybe because they couldn't get the licensing from. Uh, I was going to say, Disney would get them an hour <laughs> <or not>. <laughs> Yeah. Pretty much. But the food was excellent. Just saying. I had something new and it was really good. So. A little pricier oh, than, you know, most of the places around here. But... Well, they got I liked it better. Robot, than... man. Yeah. yeah. Got to pay for the robot. That's why I didn't get a drink. I don't want to pay for the robot. <laughs> I don't want to have to tip the robot. That's more like it. How, how do you tip a robot? What's the uh, what's the cash equivalent for a robot? Is that like charge its battery, or is that like uh, a little <laughs> can of oil? What'd you say? A couple of double A's. A couple of double A's. Double A's. Maybe a little Bitcoin. All I got is uh, CR one twenty three. So I hope that's enough. <laughs> Keep my clock running. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Oh, come on. I thought it was good. good. Can't wait. Better mine. I was like, a tough crowd. You know, if you had, had a couple of cogs, just throw it on the tray. Here you go, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Keep a couple of gears in my pocket just in case. Just Get the clamps. You. Give it the clamps. Give it the clamps. <laughs> <laughs> Will it throw me my lightsaber? That's all I care about. Fuck oh, that. Will it get me out of a garbage chute? That's all I care about. <laughs> right? <laughs> Shut up all the garbage mashers on the detention level. So, uh, I have a story about that scene. Um, oh, do tell. So, there was a... I believe the project was called Star Wars Uncut. I think that's the project. And I have it was that. like I have that. Do you? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so... Myself, my older sister, and my brother-in-law filmed a sock puppet portion of that. <laughs> nice. So we, we like built the little uh, set underneath this table, and we had sock puppets for for Leia and Han and Luke and 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 Chewie. It was it was awesome. We had such a good time doing it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Please God, tell me you got that well, on Plex, Gibbs. Well, well the, the this is a little bit different what he's talking about. Um. The one I'm talking about is when they actually went back and took the 1080p version of Star Wars. Mm. Oh, 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 you're talking about the despecialized edition. Yeah, the despecialized edition. So Harvey's yeah, Harvey's despecialized. Yeah, I love that thing. I, I may be yeah, giving the wrong name. It, it may it may be called something else, but like every scene was filmed by different groups of people, and some of it was animated. Some of it was brilliant sock puppets. Breach. I mean, brilliant. And some of them were like live action. It, it was it was pretty cool. Yeah, your, yours is a different one. It, it probably is much funnier than mine, but mine was pretty good too because it. Uh, yep. They they, did, they just took all the extra stuff out and, and made it the original movie with 1080p and made it look really. That's good. awesome. The guy that we're, does uh, the guy that does that first. Yeah, he uh, gets the archival footage from Lucasfilm. Cleans it up and cuts it with uh, parts from uh, like the Blu-rays or the 4Ks, and he's just released an updated. I mean, he releases an updated version every so often, um, but it's for him. It's just a side project. He's not a. Prof- I mean, kind of like us. He's not a professional, but he does a really good job of it. So I'm not complaining. And That's yeah, cool. uh, Zach, it's Star Wars Uncut because I just Googled it. Um, the fan-made Galactic Saga continues. Star Wars Uncut. Yeah. 
and 20... I believe like I believe it was free to to watch. So uh, yeah, it was it was right. super fun. It was like it was like three or four <laughs> seconds of film. I, I mean, it was it was a small thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, All right, so uh, I think we're about ready. We can uh, rate these for me. Uh, it's it's been a great experience. Uh, I, I do like this one. I, I I will go seek this one again. Um, it's been a smooth smoke the entire time. Um, no film on my mouth, which is always good. Um, I, I love the feel of this cigar. I like the weight of this cigar, like uh, Zach was saying. Um, I like the taste of this cigar. So um, for me, I'm going to give it a four point five. It's it's a high it's a higher rating on that one for me. Um, how about you, Andy? Um, I'm still kind of cutting through mine, but uh, it's been smooth. It's been really flavorful. Um, I've enjoyed the hell out of it. I enjoy LFD, but uh, yeah, I'm with you. It's it's just been a pleasurable experience, and I yeah, four and a half works for me. I like that four and a half leaves. If it, wasn't, yeah. just, if it wasn't as costly, I'd get more of them. I don't know how much this costs. So that, uh, according probably, to the uh, paperwork we got, it's... Ah, uh, shit. I'll look it up. Grim, go ahead. Uh, it was a very enjoyable experience. It was uh, well-made, well-bound, well... Uh, as I said earlier, no tunneling, uh, smoke up, it was good. Uh, I still wouldn't call it full body, but uh, it, was, it was good. I gotta agree with y'all. Yeah. This is very, very... I'll, I'll have a few more of these. Um, did we ever find the price? I did. I just looked it up. Uh, one of the vendors has it for right at about $14 a stick. Oh, so it's mm. under the Davidoff 3. So definitely I will. Uh, yeah. I would, I would put this right up there with that one. So you're ready. I'm going to go 4.5. Very nice. And Zacky Poo. Zacky Poo. Uh, I agree with everything everybody said. Uh, it's continued to be delicious and a little sweet and a little spicy, but not peppery. Uh, a little well, reminds me of cedar a little bit. Uh, and if I hadn't liked the or ha- had the. Uh, Romograph and Temperance. I would rate this higher because I love that cigar so much that I can't rate it equal. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a 4.5. Also, 4.5 leaves. It's uh, it's, it's a really good cigar. Gonna give but the Agonorsa a run for its money. I know it's gonna definitely give Agonorsa a good run for its money. So, on that, I'm gonna, I have to, of course, shout out to our, you know, our friends. Um, that that have been going along with our journey and you know doing this whole podcasting thing uh smoking sounds uh they've been right there with us supporting us uh the uh their their spinoff who is uh chase that's doing um uh, pipes and uh pipes and sticks he's also supporting us um we're, we're getting a lot of feedback saying you know keep doing what you're doing we're doing a good job we're actually going to have two special guests come on hopefully this month um i'm not going to reveal one of them one of them i think i've said in the previous podcast and that's the p and w cigar guy uh but we do have a, a couple of special well actually two three special guests i'm i apologize uh two i'm not going to mention mention uh because they haven't quite confirmed a date but uh they said that they do they do want to be on the podcast so uh, once they do confirm a date then we'll, we'll, we'll reveal who they are um but we appreciate you coming to visit us in the back porch lounge, uh, hang out with us, you know, put up with our bullshit. Um, we do enjoy it. Uh, reach out to us on, on all socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, we don't really pay attention that much to threads, but we're on threads. Uh, and of course, YouTube. We're on YouTube as well. So, you know, check us out wherever you like you know, to get your um, videos and things like that. We're on there. And um, on that note, I want to say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.